In the previous lecture, we discussed the open tube manometer, and we said that the open tube manometer is simply an instrument that allows us to measure the pressure inside a container. Now we're going to discuss a second type of a device, which is essentially a modified version of the open tube manometer called the barometer that allows us to measure the pressure of our atmosphere. So, how exactly does one go about in creating a barometer? So, a barometer can be created in the following two steps. So, we take a glass tube and we fill that glass tube with a certain fluid, let's say mercury. Next, we take our tube filled with mercury, we invert the tube and place it into a bowl that also contains that fluid, in this case mercury. So we get the following result, and this instrument is known as a barometer. So notice that at the top of our tube, we have a vacuum that's created. So an empty space is created at the top. And as long as we neglect any type of evaporation that takes place between the mercury and the space, we assume that this is a vacuum and the pressure must be zero. So the pressure inside the space is zero, and notice that the bowl, the mercury, the surface of our mercury is exposed to the atmosphere. And so that means the atmosphere pressure will create a force that will act on the surface of the mercury. And this force will in turn hold a certain amount of mercury up, as shown in the diagram. So once again, the pressure created by the atmosphere pushes on the surface of the mercury in the bowl because the surface is exposed to the atmosphere, which holds the mercury in the tube a certain distance change in H above the surface. So this is our distance change in H. So that means if we want to calculate the atmospheric pressure, we simply have to calculate the pressure that is required to hold this distance of mercury along our tube. So the formula is given by this equation. The pressure of the atmosphere, P atm, is equal to the density of the liquid used, in this case mercury, multiplied by the gravitational constant G, multiplied by the change in height, which is given in meters. So let's look at the following two examples. Example number one. If we create a barometer using mercury, which has a density of 13,600 kilograms divided by meter cubed, and the height of our mercury along the test tube is 76 centimeters, calculate the atmospheric pressure. So we simply take our equation, we plug in our values of 13,600, 9.8, and 0 0.76 meters, we multiply the values out and we get approximately 1.013 times 10 to the 5 newtons per meter squared, which happens to be the same exact value as our pressure of the atmosphere at sea level. Now, let's look at example number two. If we replace mercury with water, which has a density of 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed, Calculate the height of the tube required at sea level. So to calculate the height of the tube at sea level, where the pressure at sea level has this quantity, we have to use this equation. So we rearrange and we solve for change in H. Change in H is equal to the atmospheric pressure, this quantity, divided by the density of water, 1,000 kilograms per meter cube, multiplied by the gravitational constant, 9.8 meters per second squared. And we find that the height of this test tube is 10.3 meters. So we see exactly why using water in a barometer is very impractical because the height of the test tube has to be at least 10.3 meters versus if we use mercury, the height of the test tube has to be 76 centimeters. So it's much more practical to use a more dense uh, liquid such as mercury than water in a barometer.